Welcome to Flutter Teacher. You guys might know in case of list, we get the method called sort using which we can simply sort our list values. But unfortunately, in case of set, we don't have such a sort method to sort our set values. So in this specific video, I'm going to talk about three different techniques using which we can sort our set values. So for those who don't know set, list and their various methods, I recommend those to watch my videos where I have talked about set, list and their methods. And for those who understand set, list and their methods, let's get started. The first technique is very simple. Convert your set values to list value and then apply the sort function on the list values. This technique is a kind of adjustment I'm doing here. So let's understand this example. Here I have a set, a set of names here. I have a few names, Mark, Alex, John, Sam, and the James. And first of all, what I'm doing, I'm calling two list method on the, over the name. That's the reason this name of set will be converted into the name of list. And I'm saving this inside the name list. And once I got a list values, I'm calling sort method effortlessly on the list values. And when I'm printing my values, you can see I will get the values in sorted order. Alex, James, John, Mark, and the Sam. So in this case, I'm going with the default logic that the sort function is giving to me. But if you want to apply your custom logic for sorting or you want to sort your object kind of values, then I recommend to watch my videos where I have talked about various methods in the list class. And in that video, I have talked in detail about applying a custom kind of sort logic in your program and to sort the object kind of values using the sort method. I will provide link in the description for you guys. Second technique is by using the class called split reset. Here I'm using the constructor from from this split reset class. But before I start the second technique, let me tell you one of the biggest drawback with the first technique. In case of first technique, what I'm doing, I'm simply converting my set values into the list values. It means I'm not working with the set values, I'm relying on the list value. But consider a situation where I don't want the list values. I want my values to be present in the form of set and set only. So I can't go with the first technique or rather I should convert back my list values into sorted set values. So that's not at all preferable. Second technique has a two advantage over that technique. The first advantage is if I'm using the split reset, it's actually a kind of set. <laughs> it's actually one of the implementation of set class. That's the reason it's actually a set, it's not a list. This is the first uh, advantage. And second advantage, I will talk at the end of the second technique. So let's understand how I'm sorting the values. The split reset is a kind of set. It is actually the implementation of set. And this is a kind of implementation where each and every value of set is always in the form of sorted order. That is, whether you go on adding the element or you remove the element, all your elements in this split reset will always remain in sorted order. Now the question is how it is sorting the values. So it will sort the value simply how sort function sorts the value of list. Or if you want to apply your custom sort, you can also apply your custom sorting logic here. Names is actually a set that I have created in order to hold some names. I have names Mark, Alex, John, Sam and James. And this is not a set with the sorted values. What I'm doing, I'm simply creating the object of split reset. The name of this object is sorted names. And in order to, in order to create the object, I'm calling a from constructor. So simply I'm writing split reset dot from. And for this from constructor, I'm passing the values of name. So what will happen? When this split reset object is created, it is creating the object from the values of this name set. And as I told you, that speciality of this split reset is it will always arrange your value in the sorted order. That's the reason when I'm printing this sorted name set, that is the split reset, you can see on console, I'm getting the output in the sorted order. Now the second advantage of this technique over the first technique is, let's say if I'm adding any value on these sorted names, let's say I want to add some value, I'm adding the value like say Denise. So when I add the value called Denise, you can see when I'm rerunning the program, you can see on the console, all these values are properly in sorted order. This technique is actually sorting the value in ascending order. You might have a question how to sort the values in descending order or how to apply the custom sort here. So in this example, I will explain how to apply 
descending sort logic here. By default, this technique sorts your value in ascending order. What to do to sort your values in descending order? In order to do this thing, we have to pass second parameter to the from constructor as a function. This function takes two elements, that is the left element and the right element. So this is a kind of bubble sort technique you have to apply here. So simply I'm comparing left element with the right element. So if I write this logic, that is I'm simply returning left element dot compared to the right element. In this case, it will sort my values in ascending order. That's the reason if I rerun the program, we can see that values are there in sorted order with the ascending order. But if you want to sort the values in descending order, the first thing is you can write right element dot compared to in bracket the left element or simply just write the minus sign here and rerun the program, you will find that your values are now sorted in the descending order. Now, if you guys want me to explain how to perform custom kind of sorting logic or how to sort the object kind of values in this technique, please give me that comment so that I can create this special video for this topic. Let's look at a third technique. In this technique, I'm creating the object of split reset instead of creating the object of set or instead of converting my values to the least kind of values. This technique mostly work when you don't receive the value in the form of state. Consider that uh, you're working in some application and you're getting some values. So it might happen that you are getting some predefined values in the form of state. So in this case, this technique won't work. This technique actually works when you are initiating your own set. That is, you are starting from your empty set and you are going to add and remove the elements from the set. So, in order to work with this, simply what I have done, instead of creating the set object, I have simply created the object of split reset here. And this is the empty split reset I have defined. It don't have any element. And simply I have added the element Sam, Mark, Dennis and Alex here. And when I print these values, you can see all my values are there in the proper sorted order. Now, if even I remove some value or if I go on adding some value later on, my values will remain in sorted order. This is what the beauty of this split tree set is. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video. If you really like the work I'm doing, then don't forget to like my videos, share my videos, subscribe my channel and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.